Today I'm going to show you how to make a bread that's got to be the favourite of that b Carol f Baskin. You know, I've never seen the Tiger King documentary. I only know about it because that's all anyone bloody talked about through the first lockdown. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Big Friendly Grub. I hope you're well. And today I'm going to show you how to make a beast of a loaf. It is tiger bread. Tiger bread is a fantastic loaf. You can get it in most supermarkets. It's main characteristic, it's got a lovely crust on the outside that is made using a paste. And it's got a very kind of like speckled pattern. So I'm not sure why it's actually called tiger bread. Maybe cheetah bread would be more appropriate. Or sometimes Sainsbury sells it as giraffe bread. But it is commonly known as tiger bread. It is one of my favorites. And it's also one of my favorites to make. And it's actually not that hard, as I said, you just make the crust by using a paste, which is super simple. And I'm gonna show you how to make it today. So it's one of my favorite breads, so let's get started. So to make the actual loaf, all we need is some traditional bread ingredients. So we need strong white bread flour, yeast, sugar, salt, and lukewarm water. So to make my loaf today, I'm gonna to be using a stand mixer, but you can also do this by hand. It just takes a bit of extra effort and obviously a lot more kneading. But if you've got a stand mixer, use it because it makes life so much easier. So I'm gonna start off by putting in my flour, and pop the yeast in on one side of the bowl, pop the salt on the other side of the bowl because salt does not go well with yeast directly. It's fine when you all combine it, but putting it directly onto the yeast will kill your yeast. And then popping the sugar on top of the yeast because yeast absolutely loves sugar, helps it become more active. And I'm gonna pop probably about half of the water in to start with, because we might not need all of it. And I'm gonna start this off combining on a gentle speed. And as that starts to combine, I'm just gonna gradually add in the rest of my water a little bit more. We want the dough just to start to come together and start making the bowl clean. We don't want it too wet. It's gonna be a nice, smooth, elastic dough. A little bit more water. So you can see that's come together now. It's not wet, it's leaving the bowl clean. So this is now the point where we can actually get this just kneaded. And I'm gonna put it onto about a medium speed now and leave it to knead for about five minutes. If you're doing it by hand, you might wanna do it for 10 minutes. It depends on how good you are at kneading. So you can see that has come into a lovely, smooth, elastic dough. It's really, really nice dough. Lovely and smooth. So now this can pop back into the bowl Take off this hook and I'll pop it on the lid, which will seal it in, and that'll leave it to prove for about an hour or until it's doubled in size. Okay, it's been about an hour and you can see this has risen up quite nicely. It's about double in size from what it was. So I'm gonna take this out, get all the excess as well. Then I knock the air out. It's very therapeutic. And I'm gonna stretch this into about a rectangular shape. Then we want to shape this into a nice oblong loaf shape. So I'm going to turn it over, get into there, and kind of just fold it in like so, bring these edges up. And pinch together all these seams, because it seems like a good idea. And then I'll turn it back over and get this nicely shaped like so. Get under there and tuck in all those edges. Give it a rock backwards and forwards to get a nice shape on it. Kind of like a very chunky sausage. This is such a nice dough, it feels so nice. Then with that folded into a lovely long sausage loaf shape, I'm gonna transfer this onto my baking sheet. I was gonna call it a baking sheet. Like a baking stone is what I've got, but you can use a baking tray. Dust underneath this with a bit of flour so it won't stick when it bakes. Then I'm just gonna cover this with a clean tea towel and leave this to prove again for about an hour. So our loaf is almost proved, so we need to do the paste that will give us that tiger bread look. So all we need for this is some rice flour, water, yeast, sugar, no, nope, salt, sugar, and sesame oil. And that's all we need. We're gonna turn this into a paste and then we can put that onto our loaf and create our tiger bread. So our paste is nice and easy. All we do is pop everything into a bowl. There's the flour, yeast, sugar, salt, sesame oil, and our water. 
And I'm just gonna mix that all into a nice paste. Well, it won't look like a nice paste, but it will be a very nice paste that will go onto our bread and give us that tiger bread look. There we go, that's a lovely smooth paste. I'm just gonna leave that to rest for five minutes and then that can go on top of our loaf and we can get our loaf in the oven. Okay, we can now get our paste onto our loaf, which you can probably see from here has risen up very nicely, look at that. And all we're gonna do is get this paste and just gently spread it all over our loaf. And get it all coated all over. Get it all on the top, all around the sides. This is probably as close as I get to DIY, like if you're filling in like some walls or something like that. There we go, that is all nicely coated in our paste, so this can now go into the oven. So in this goes into the oven at 200 degrees C for probably about 30 minutes, I would say. So we'll come back in 30 minutes and see how that's come out. Whew, that's hot. Oh, there we go, look at that. One magnificent looking tiger loaf, you be quiet. Look at that, that has come out really, really well. That looks fantastic. Got that lovely crust on there. Sounds amazing. Got kind of like that classic split down the middle. Because usually on most breads you kind of like cut a slit in it anyway, just to kind of let the steam out. This one creates its own natural one and it gives it that natural tiger bread look. It just looks really, really good. So I'm gonna need to leave that to cool for a little bit, unfortunately. But I'm gonna leave it, I don't know, maybe half an hour just to cool down a bit. Then I'm gonna cut into it because there's something lovely about still warm bread. Look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? That is such a good looking loaf of tiger bread. It's just got the right amount of everything really. Color, texture, and it smells incredible as well. So there's nothing else left to do. Got to crack into this. It's still warm, but that's the best way to have bread, I think. Just straight out of the oven, a little bit warm. I'm gonna cut the end off so we can see how this has turned out. Hopefully it'll have a really nice texture inside. Just listen to that crust. Oh yeah, it's come out really nicely. Lovely texture on the inside, so soft. Oh, it's gonna be great. So, gonna get some butter on this. I'm gonna try it. There we go, one lovely bit of tiger bread, which I am now gonna try, because I've talked about it enough. So, oh, I know what this is gonna be like. This is gonna be incredible. But it's just such a satisfying loaf of bread to make. Oh, so, so good for right. Oh, it's just so good. So, so good. It's it's simple, it is. It's just a simple white loaf, really. But there's just something about it. That crust just gives it an extra, you know, lovely bit of texture. A little bit of extra flavour in there as well. You've got the sesame oil in there. The battery in my camera just chose to die there. Perfect timing, right as I'm wrapping up. So it's probably, uh, yeah, time for me to wrap up. As I was saying, yeah, that crust just adds a bit of extra to it. There's some nice sweetness. You've got the flavour of the sesame oil in there and it's just fantastic. It is one of my favourite loaves of bread to eat. It's one of my favourite loaves of bread to make and I highly suggest you give it a go as well because it's not as hard as you think. You know, once you know how to do that paste, it's dead easy and it's just so, 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 so satisfying to make. It really is. It is such a good loaf of bread. And I'm gonna go off and finish this because it's delicious. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. I really hope you give it a go because I think everyone should give this a go at least once. And if you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all of that stuff. But otherwise, I will see you next time on Big Fring Grub. Take care. Bye. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's just such a satisfying bread. But it's just such a satisfying
but it's just such a sat no but it's just such a satisfying <laughs>